with that condition? Or dost thou wish to begin wondering and inquiring again? All the inhabitants of this valley celebrate their lot, and at the annual visit of the emperor invite others to partake of their felicity. Great prince, said Imlac, I shall speak the truth. I know not one of your antennas who does not lament the hour when he entered this retreat. I am less unhappy than the rest, because I have a mind replete with images, which are very combine of pleasure. I can amuse my solitude by the renovation of the knowledge which begins to fade from my memory, and by the recollection of the accidents of my past, yet all this ends in sorrowful consideration that my acquirements are now useless, and that none of my pleasures can be gained. Enjoyed. The rest whose minds have no impression but the present moment are either corroded by malignant passions or sit stupid among the gloom of perpetual vacancy. What passions can infest those as a prince who have no rivals? We are in a place where impotence precludes malice and where all envy is repressed by the community of enjoyments. There may be community, said Imlac, of material possessions, but there can never be a community of love or of esteem. It must happen that one will please more than another, and that he knows himself despised will be envious, and still more envious and malevolent if he is condemned to live in the presence of those who despise him. The invitations by which they allure, them, allure others to a state which they feel to be wretched proceed from the natural malignity of hopeless misery. They are wary of themselves and of each other, and expect to find relief in new companions. Then they envy the liberty which their folly has forfeited, and will gladly see all mankind in prison like themselves. From this crime, however, I am wholly flee. No man can say he is wretched by my persuasion. I look with pity on the crowds who are annually soliciting a mission to captivity, and wish that it were lawful for me to warn them of their danger. My dear Inlac, said the prince, I will open to thee my whole heart. I have long meditated an escape from the happy valley. I have examined the mountains on every side, but feel myself insuperably barred. Teach me the way to break my prison. Thou shalt be the companion of my flight, the guide of my rambles, and the partner of my fortune, and my sole director in the choice of life. Sir, answered the poet, your escape will be difficult and perhaps you will soon repent your curiosity. The world, which you figure to yourself smooth and quiet as the lake in the valley, you will see a sea foaming with tempests and boiling with whirlpools. You will be sometimes overwhelmed by the waves of violence, sometimes dashed against the rocks of treachery. Amidst wrongs of frauds, competitions, and anxieties, you will wish a thousand times for these seats of quiet, and willingly quit hope to be free from fear. Do not seek to deter me from my purpose, said the prince. I am impatient to see what thou hast seen, and since thou art wary of the valley thyself, it is evident that thy former state was better than this. Whatever the consequence of my experiment, I am resolved to judge with my own eyes the various conditions of men, and then to deliberately make my choice of life. I am afraid, said Imlac, you are hindered by stronger restraints than my persuasion, yet, if your determination is fixed, I do not counsel you to despair. Few things are impossible to diligence and skill.